Hi, this is Elkin, and welcome back to my channel. So now we know the verdict came, and we still don't know what the actual charge that brought up the 34 misdemeanors to a felony is. It's not explained. It doesn't matter. Um, I understand the jury is a little concerned about the safety. Well, I have some advice for you if you did serve on that jury. Number one, do not talk to the media. And if you have, you started talking to them, stop. Do not give interviews. Do not be on their shows. Do not be on the podcast. Do not do anything. Do not even contact me. I do not want to know. You're concerned? It, it's founded because we understand they're already trying to dox you. That's right. They're already trying to dox you. And believe me. You're not the first jury that they're trying to dox because it's already had happened. The Kyle Rittenhouse jury almost got doxed by an MSNBC uh, contractor. Try to follow their bu bus to see where they were going to park. The only reason he got caught was because he ran the red light like an imbecile. So the judge threw MSNBC out of the courtroom the next day. The grand jury in the trunk case in Georgia, Fulton County, they got doxxed. Apparently, those imbeciles over there were so happy that they indicted Trump and, and the uh, 19, 18, 19 other conspirators. They didn't bother to safeguard their information. Hopefully, New York State will safeguard your information of the city. But you should be vigilant. Do not answer any suspicious emails, phone calls, or anything. Because you don't know who's out to get you. If there are. Because right now, yes, you're considered heroes. You're like conquerors. You're, you're the uh, toast of the town and so on. I mean, look at Whoopi Goldberg, how happy she is. But, and this is a big but, if your, your conviction that you put on Trump gets overturned, if Trump gets elected president, which is 99% short chance that you now helped him get there, or third possibility, you could lose that, that imbecile you have for a governor right now in New York. Because she almost lost at least Zettelman by almost 5 percentage point. Biden is still losing. His poll numbers, last we checked before the, uh, the conviction. He's only leading Trump in New York by 9 points. It might be going down lower. Meaning that the next time she runs for governor, a Republican or a modern Democrat could beat the crap out of her and kick her out of office. And what would happen? Most likely, Alan Braggs and Leticia James will be removed. And New York State will give Donald Trump the pardon. Any of those three scenarios, you're going to be from turn from the toast of the town to toast it, burnt to a crisp. So, my advice: stay far away from the media as possible. They want to act like they're your friends; they're not your friends. Because the moment one of those three scenarios happen, they're going to turn on you. A lot of people are going to turn on. So, do not give these people any interviews. Do not show up on any of the shows. Especially The View. Do not get involved. Stay as far away as possible from these folks. I mean, look what happened to uh, the foreman from the uh, Trump and indictment in Georgia. Acted like a total imbecile on TV. They didn't know what to think about her. And of course, she was one of the jurors that got doxxed. 
So. <laughs> yes. Stay as far away from the media as possible. Protect yourself at all times. Always, always be vigilant. Make sure nobody's following you. Nothing. Make sure they can't get to you. It's going to be a very long time, if ever, you can speak to the media. Because they do not have your best interest. The people in New York may act like they have your best interest, but they're not. Like I said, in one of the scenarios that I just mentioned, where it happened, God help you. I'm just glad I moved out of New York. I'm glad I didn't have to serve on that jury. I want nothing to do with the jury system in New York, ever. I don't want to be in a courtroom in New York. I don't want to serve in, in, in a courtroom in New York. I don't want to be a defendant in New York. I want nothing to do with the court system in New York. And in case you're wondering why I'm so negative, let me remind you, in 2005, Yes, uh, we went on strike. We violated the state Taylor law. It was supposed to get hit with uh, fines like $2,000 a day in double. So the two-day strike was total $4,000. $4,000. Some people got it worse because my um, understanding that people worked uh, overtime on the day off. The second day that was the day off. It went from four to eight thousand dollars. The union was heavily fined. They lost the dues check off. Roger Dusan, the union president, was sent to jail because uh, that fireman, uh, whose family has connections with the uh, Republican Party, most like El Rhino, um, he was sent to jail. And guess what? 2011, the United Nations. International Labor Organization review the strike, all the information, and so on. After the conclusion, they announced in the papers in November of 2011, shortly before the anniversary of the strike, that the New York City Transit Strike of 2005 was considered legal. The media crapped in their pants because now all this time they were calling this strike illegal and they were saying all kinds of nasty stuff all of a sudden now they had egg in their face daily news and the new york post immediately removed the word illegal strike from their pages i told you the media is not your friend they were yelling and screaming and carrying on and they wanted everybody in jail they wanted people fired you know all the stuff with the vaccine they were trying to do that in 2005 and what happened yeah they got their way in with the vaccine but they were going to do it to try to work in 2005 in the end the city of new york got got smacked several times 2010 the big snowstorm New York City Transit and New York City didn't want to pay overtime. The trains and bus service was... They couldn't do anything. And by the way, some members of the sanitation union was going around saying they got involved in a, in a rule book slowdown or something. But guess what? They didn't get penalized with the state tail law. Nobody was thrown in jail. Nobody was penalized. Nothing. And they're coming in confessing they did something illegal and they didn't get punished. And they did something that was more dangerous than the transit workers did. Because in 2005, there was no snowstorm. Yeah, it was cold, but there was no snowstorm. You have a snowstorm and you're shutting down service because you didn't want to plow for Michael Bloomberg. Or that's what they're claiming. But those people who made this claim should have been penalized, not everybody. But they should have been penalized. They didn't. I ran into teachers' union for a year, refused to go back to the classes. 
they were using the uh, the COVID to uh, screw the kids over. You think uh, Bill de Blasio would have uh, evoked the tail on him? Nope. He was in bed with them and he was so happy to screw your kids over. So, now you know the history of this. Oh, and one other thing, they tried to screw us again with the tail on 2011 and they got, got smacked again. The same day they announced that we're going to file the paperwork, go to court, those two officials that made the announcements ended up with egg in their face. Why? Because they claimed that uh, there was a rule book slowdown because we were having so many 12-9s. On that same day they made the announcements and they were trying to follow the paperwork in court, we had two trains at 125th Street on the Lexington Avenue line. We didn't have the second Avenue subway so back then. Hit two passengers with the with the trains. One was in the station, one was north of the station. Problem was, now the second train blocked all the switches, and now all of a sudden, before rush hour, you had no service on the Lexington Avenue line. Those two officials never showed up on a media anywhere again together. Now they had egg in the face. They had to withdraw the complaint because when they checked the black boxes, both trains were operating normal speed, and they were not slowing down. Despite the fact the union said, you know, you should slow down for safety, they're operating normal speed. So, they had egg in their face. Don't be them. Don't be that guy. Again, if you serve that that juror, do not, do not talk to the media, do not go in interviews, do not show up on their shows, podcasts, anything, nothing, do not put anything anywhere where they can trace you. Do not. Do not contact me. Do not contact anybody. No, no creator, nothing. Stay as far away from any media as possible. The less they know who you are, the better. And I'm sorry that I had to say it this way, but being the history of what happened to the Carl Rittenhouse jurors and in the Fulton County jurors, you don't want to be in that predicament. So, do not get involved with the media. Stay as far away as possible. I don't care if Whoopi Goldberg crap in her pants that she can't interview anybody from the jury. And I'm sorry, Whoopi. I do not recommend these folks show up on your show because it's going to be a very bad idea. If it pisses you off, too bad. And Sonny, <laughs> your your excuse for a lawyer. Oh, and Robert De Niro. Now I know why you're so mad. Robert Downey Jr. took the Oscar away from you, didn't he? That's why you're so mad. I don't know about that Epstein Island stuff. I'm not aware of anything. And I'm not going to link you to that because I had no clue where if you were there or not there, I didn't see the actual paperwork saying you were there, so I can't say anything. You know, they're trying to say that Jimmy Kimmel was there too, but, uh, you know, I don't know nothing about it. So, that's another reason why you folks in the jury should not be involved with the media. What I just said about Epstein Island... They could come up with wild rumor st stories about you, too. So, once again, last time, my advice. Do not tell them who you are. Do not contact the media. Media try to contact you. Ignore them. Do not get on their shows. Do not give them interviews. Do not do anything. No I podcast or don't even answer YouTube. Do not contact me. Only created nothing. Stay as far away from all media as possible. You do not want to take a risk that something goes wrong later on. You know, the election's five months away. The Supreme Court could overturn this too. Uh, so, 
don't. Stay as far away from the media as possible. And for anybody who's trying to find these jurors, dox these jurors, whatever it is, don't. Do not be that guy because you're going to be paraded in front of a New York courthouse somewhere in Manhattan with, an unfriend, with another unfriendly jury and another unfriendly judge. And uh, it's as you saw what happened with Trump. It's not going to end well for you either. So do not do that. Five, the election is five months away. Trump just earned over $34 million in one day. I think he went up to 52 to $58 million. Then The Republican Party picked up another $300 million. He's still winning. It's not turning back. Yes, they're, they're celebrating now, but they'll be crying a whole lot later. Especially if he gets in. And one other thing to Robert De Niro, you should seek some medical help. You know, you're thinking being a tough guy and cursing people out and all that wonderful stuff. You know, there's many diseases that come and take advantage of your uh, TDS and <laughs> you can end up with a stroke. Uh, don't think that's how you want to end your career. And if you want that Oscar that bad, stay off the TDS, get back to work, and do what you do best. Not what you do worse. Politics sucks when it comes to you. So I can say so long for now. Don't forget your stop. Do not harass the jurors. Jurors stay away from the media. That's my best advice I could give you. Stay away. We don't want to know who you are. Keep it to yourself. Let the media piss in their own pants. They can't talk to you. Because it's best for you not to say nothing to these folks. Because they're going to turn on you. Believe me. Just like they turn on Trump, they're going to turn on you. Bye.